Hey, change agents, and welcome to another episode of Mission Impact Monday. <laughs> and welcome to another episode of Impact Monday. Um, my name is Tracy V. Allen, and today we are going to be talking about 10 steps to starting a social enterprise. Now, of course, we know there are way more steps than just 10 steps, but these are the 10 basic steps that you need to take into consideration when you're thinking about starting a social enterprise or determining whether or not a social enterprise is the right um, decision for you to make. Again, my name is Tracy V. Allen. I'm the owner of TVA Consulting Group, where we help social entrepreneurs um, to design, build, and fund their social ventures. So we help change agents. We also work with nonprofits as well and small businesses, but our main focus is social entrepreneurs. Okay, so let's get started <clears throat> to, on these 10 steps. So step number one is to ask questions if ask yourself the question are you ready to start a social enterprise because remember essentially starting a social enterprise is like starting two businesses because you have your for-profit um section of your business where you're going to um promote and sell whatever products or services that you have then you're going to have the social cause section of your business where you're going to offer programs and services to the general public at a reduced or free cost. You can do this on your own or you can choose to partner with another agency or nonprofit organization to provide these services. Or you can divert a certain percentage of the funds that you make in your for-profit business to donating directly to a specific social cause that you are invested in. So it's really built in to your company, but you really have to think of it as two separate entities because on the for-profit section, you have to make sure that you make enough money to support your for-profit, pay all of your overhead expenses, have some surplus and use some of that surplus to actually um, impact the cause that you have decided to champion. So that's step number one is answering the question, are you ready? Are you ready to undertake this type of venture? The second thing you want to do is to define your cause. What define your cause? What is it that you want to champion and why? Right. Um, Because you just don't want to go out there to support something just to say you're a social enterprise. You actually want to be um committed to the cause. You want to have some type of uh, attachment to the cause because when you're, especially if you're having to solicit from other people or other agencies to help with it, you really want to be able to tell that story, tell that good story. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it above where I talk about how to tell that good story. And also I'm having a class that, a course that I'm putting out right now is called telling profitable stories. So when you have that cause, which I'll also link in the description below, but when you have a cause that you're connected to telling the story and pulling at people's heartstrings so that they can open their purse strings becomes a simple. And yes, your business can make a lot of money and yes, you can support the, um, your cause on your own without solicitation, but you can't do the work on your own. So regardless to whether or not you're making enough money to support the cause, you're going to need the community support. You're going to need the support of other agencies. So really choosing a cause that you're connected to and being able to articulate the story and have people connect to it as well so that you can make an even greater impact is going to be essential. And again, I will link the video somewhere up here in i think over here right i'll link the video here to telling good um tell me that good story and in the description below if you are really interested in being able to tell stories that are profitable right and telling them the right way i will link the course in the um description below all right, number three, the third thing that you want to do is choose the type of entity that you're going to start your social enterprise under. So there's a bunch of different types of entity, and I've done a video on that as well, and I'll link it up here um, so that you can go ahead and reference it. So with that um, 
type of entity. You can start off as a nonprofit, not a 501c3, but a nonprofit organization, an L3C, an S Corp, um, a benefit corp, which a lot of people don't know about, or L3C or an LLC. So those are some of the entities that you can incorporate on. And like in California and Delaware, they're um, two, uh, they're, their benefit corp is called something else. I can't remember exactly what it is right now, but in that video, I do reference it that I will put over here, right? I do reference what it's called in those states, but basically it's still a benefit corp. They just call it something else. So that is, you have to determine what type of entity is going to be best for you. We all know the traditional entities like LLC and S Corp um, and nonprofit. And those, um, well, LLC and S Corp are what most entrepreneurs form under. When you form under a nonprofit or L3C or Benefit Corp, instinctively, when you say that's what your um, entity title is, people know right away that you are a social enterprise. So if you just want to put out that era, so being a social enterprise, then that is, those are the three that I would recommend. Now, if you're an entrepreneur already, you already have your LLC and you want to become a social um, entrepreneur, then you don't need to change your status. You just need to incorporate your cause into whatever you're doing currently. All right. Number four, create a plan of action and develop to develop the social enterprise. So, you know, I've talked about it before and I've had videos on that, too, that I'll put up here as well. Right. Up here, wherever. Right. Um, on how to create a business plan. I have videos on how to create a strategic plan. You need to sit down and you really need to plan and think through how is this going to work? What am I going to need in my for-profit business? What am I going to need in the social enterprise? Who am I going to need to be connected to in the social enterprise to get it done? You know, all of the things that go along with creating a successful business, you're going to have to plan it out times two and then integrate it together to make sure you have a system systems and processes that are working efficiently so that you're not working harder, but you're actually working smarter. So taking the time to plan is going to be an essential component to the success of starting a social enterprise. Number five, you want to create a budget. No business runs without a budget, right? You need to know how much money it's going to cost you to run, especially the social enterprise arm of your business, right? Because that is where, again, you're going to be um, offering products and services either at a reduced price, so you're going to subsidize it, or you're going to offer it free of charge. So that means, again, like I stated before, you have to make sure that you're making enough money on your for-profit um, side of your business to cover all of your overhead expenses and then have money left over in case the business runs into some type of problem and also have enough money left over to, to help your social cause. So make sure you sit down, create a very tight budget and figure out where the money is going to be coming into the business from and how much of it is going to be going out of the business. It's essential to create a budget. Number six, identify your funding sources, kind of like what I just talked about. Are you going to need to, um, how much money are you going to make in earned income? Are you going to get contributions or investors, right? So are you going to ask for contributions? So contributions are similar to donations in a nonprofit, only that you call them contributions in a social enterprise because uh, people are not getting a tax write-off for it. And when you say donations, automatically in people's heads, they think about tax write-off. But you want to make sure to tell people you're not a 501c3 tax-exempt organization. So what they're giving is a contribution to your social enterprise, and they're doing that out of the goodness of their heart and because they have connected with your mission or they've connected with you and they want to support what you're doing. Um, are you going to need a loan from the bank? Are you going to have investors? Because unlike a nonprofit in a social enterprise, you can have investors, people who buy in to a certain share in the business. And yes, there are a lot of people that invest in social enterprises. So you are definitely going to want to figure out, you know, where your income is going to come from in this business. So take some time to identify the funding sources, how much money is going to come from each funding source. And of course, that will impact your budget as well. Number seven, get professional advice. This is not a DIY project. Okay. You need to have 
serious professional advice when you are thinking about starting a social enterprise because so much can go wrong. It's pretty new to you. You don't know it. You're combining essentially two businesses. Get some, get some professional advice from a, someone who has expertise in this area. Number eight, put together an advisory board. You don't want to make all the decisions for your social enterprise by yourself. Okay. Because the way how you think, whether you want to admit it or not, you are still removed from that cause. You're not living that cause at that moment. Well, you shouldn't be if you're helping people to get out of a certain situation. So that means you need to put an advisory board together, a group of experts who work diligently in that particular cause and people who are still struggling within that community to get out from whatever it is that you're trying to champion so that when you're delivering products and services to that demographic of people, you're delivering it. You're delivering, first of all, what they want. And secondly, how they want it, not the way you want to give it to them. Because if people can't utilize what it is that you're giving to them effectively, then it just does not work. And your number one focus is to create impact. So putting an advisory board together is another essential component, right? Number nine is to um, launch, advertise, and promote. So you've done all of the legwork, you've got your systems and processes together, you've laid the foundation, you know what you're going to do, you know how you want to do it. Now you got to tell everybody about it. As a matter of fact, you should be doing this all throughout the ways. Once you've decided that a social enterprise is what you want to do, then you should be telling people and trying to garner some support around it. But now you want to do some social media advertising and promoting and just telling even more people, telling the masses about what it is that you are doing and how you are doing it to impact the community. So you're advertising both. You're, you're not advertising them separately per se. You're telling people you are a social enterprise. This is what I sell. This is what I offer to you at a price. And a certain percentage goes to my social cause and you tell them about the social cause or um, we work with such and such a nonprofit or organization to create impact in whatever way. So it's integrated into your um, advertisements and your promotion of your business. So make sure that you're launching your website, you have your social media platforms up, you have all your content together. That is part of the launching, promoting and advertising. And if you could get some press around it, you know, if especially if it's something that really impacts the, um, is a real problem in the community and you're out here championing it, do some press releases, get enough buzz around your idea. Okay, and number 10, okay, so number 10 is, open your social enterprise, right? So you've done all of the legwork. Now it is time to start selling your products and services. You've advertised, you've launched, you've promoted, start selling. And whatever you do in this stage, be consistent with it. And that is how you are going to stay in business. That is how you're going to continue to get the monies that you need in order to continue impacting your social cause in your social enterprise. Remember, it's, as a social enterprise, it is a business. It is a part, it's ingrained in the business. That is the reason why you started the business. As a social entrepreneur, you had your business and then decided to integrate a social cause into that business in most cases right? But your social enterprise is formed to solve a specific problem. And you have to make sure that you are selling product, you're bringing in revenue in order to solve, to have the money to solve that problem. So again, those are the 10 steps, 10 basic steps, 10 easy steps to starting a social enterprise. I really hope that this was helpful to you. I'm going to try to remember to put all of the links that I talked about um, up here. Right. Um, yeah. Over here. That will be somewhere over here. And then I will put the link to the course telling profitable stories. If you really want to become a good storyteller, because telling stories is how you're going to get people to connect with your brand, to connect with your cause, to connect with your products. If you really, really want to become a master storyteller and tell stories that are going to get people to connect with you, 
and purchase from you and um, allow you to be able to create more impact in this in the community telling profitable stories is where you want to be the link is going to be in the description below remember to like to share to subscribe and to turn on your notification bells because i come to you every monday and i don't want you to miss any of the videos so make sure you turn on your notification bells and thank you for joining me again and i will see you guys next week bye